I'm struggling to concentrate. I'm getting stressed out already. This semester has really been hectic. The lecturers have even made it worse with a lot of mid-semester exams to write. Lazy bones. We are only halfway through the semester and you're already tired. You better store enough energy to complete the semester. Whatever. Can you please tone down your voice? Selena. We are sorry for disturbing you. My apologies. Never mind. Thank you. Yasmin. Why do you have to apologize to her? We are disturbing her, and it's polite and right that we apologize. No. This is a classroom, not a cemetery. Don't we have the right to talk anymore? Why are you complicating matters, Genevieve? I never said you couldn't talk. I only ask you to tone down your voice. Sorry, I can't tone down my voice. It's very simple. If you don't feel comfortable sitting here with us, simply leave and take a seat where perhaps ghosts are seated. What did you just do that for? You made her leave. Yes. Let her leave. That lady doesn't see eye to eye with me. I also hate her to death. I never knew you hated her that much, but why the hatred? I just don't know, but all I know is that I just can't stand her. Anytime I see her, I feel this bad blood between us. You are not justified in hating her for no apparent reason. You are on the verge of killing an innocent soul. The earlier you start replacing this hatred in your heart for her with love, the better. Why do you say I'm on the verge of killing an innocent soul? I have no intention of executing her. Well, soon you may. You see, so many years ago, there lived two very close friends, Dennis and Richard. They were working together as teachers at the same institution. Everything seemed to be going well with their friendship until Dennis allowed hatred to creep into his heart unsuspectingly. Dennis, I really appreciate your friendship. Ever since I joined this school, you've made me feel at home. In the space of three months, I've received three commendations as the best teacher. I owe this to your constant encouragement. Don't mention Richard. I'm always here for you. I must say, you've also been a great friend, and congratulations once again for your achievement. Honey. How is work today? Fine. Who is awarded the best teacher today? Richard. Richard again? This is the third consecutive time he's received this commendation, if my memory serves me right. Yes, darling. I think he deserves it. He has worked hard for it. Ain't you thinking what I'm thinking? What are you thinking? Ever since he joined the school, you're no longer recognized as the best teacher. Don't overthink it, my dear. Richard is my very good friend at school. I like him. If he's been recognized as the best teacher instead of me, so be it. I'm happy for him. Well, I hope it doesn't put your position as the head teacher under threat. Good morning, Sir Dennis. Good morning, Abigail. How are you this morning? I'm doing great. How about you? By his grace. I'm fine. Sorry for cutting in on you. I shouldn't be saying this. But I just want to warn you about your friend, Richard. I understand you guys are very good friends. This may sound like gossip, but when you left yesterday, the principal invited Richard to his office. I eavesdropped on their conversation. In fact, they talked at length, and I heard the principal suggest your position as head teacher to him. And what was his response? That's the sad part. Unfortunately, I had an urgent call to attend to, so I had to leave. Just be careful, Mr. Dennis. Richard must be up to something. Thank you for the information. Hmm. This is what I get for considering Richard to be a good friend. Yes. I have been able to get Mr. Dennis to have doubts about his friend. He will soon come to despise him just as much as I do, at which point we may work together to kick him out of the school.
Honey, you were right. Right about? I should have believed you when you told me my position as the head teacher would come under threat with Richard being awarded the best teacher for three consecutive times. Darling. Go straight to the point. What happened at school today? Can you imagine? According to one of the teachers, the principal discussed my role as head teacher with Richard. The principal suggested to him that he become the head teacher. What? And what will become of you? That means they are planning on demoting you. No, darling. This must not happen. You must do something. He's the one calling. I'm not going to pick up his call. Henceforth, he ceases to be my friend. I'm beginning to hate you, Richard. You must pay dearly for this. Why is Dennis not picking up my calls? Today, he didn't talk to me or go to lunch with me. What is happening to him? I hope he's fine. See, Mr. Dennis. You must do everything in your power to keep your position as head teacher. Yes. What do I do? If the principal is on the side of Richard, it's going to be very difficult. Relax. I'm also on your side. I can assure you that it's not going to be difficult. You only have to cooperate with me on this plan to get Mr. Richard out of this school. So what is the plan? Let's go to the principal and accuse him of sexually harassing some of the female students. I will incite some of the teachers and students to join in the accusation. With two or more witnesses, there's no way the principal won't believe us. Mm. I think it's a very good plan. Sir Richard, what is this report I'm hearing? I always thought you were a man of integrity. Sir, frankly, I'm surprised myself. I am innocent of these charges. Believe me, sir. How can I believe you? The accusation is coming from three teachers, including your very good friend, Mr. Dennis. Some of the students have also confirmed this. I just don't know how to defend myself, but they are all blatant lies. Mr. Richard, I'm sorry to tell you this. We can't have you as our teacher in this school anymore. You're fired. Aww. So how did he take this betrayal? He was plunged into a deep state of unrest and depression. Life became meaningless to him after he struggled to land a decent job. He couldn't provide for his basic needs. He reached a point where he committed suicide. Oh, poor Richard. Did they ever get to find out the truth after his death? Yes, they did. Abigail openly confessed that she lied about Richard and that all their accusations about him were false. That was when it dawned on Dennis that he had committed a grave sin against his friend. He killed his friend out of hatred. I now understand why Jesus said, any man who hates his brother has committed murder. Bravo. You're getting the picture now. So, you see, you have to find out the source of your hatred towards her and make amends. Your hatred could be because you are insecure or because you see her as a threat. The fact that you hate her doesn't mean God hates her. She will keep enjoying her best life and you will be at the losing end, harboring hatred towards her. This statement struck a chord in me. The fact that I hate her doesn't mean God hates her. I feel ashamed of myself. It's never too late, Genevieve. Tell the Holy Spirit to fill your heart with love for her. Thank you, Yasmin. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more inspirational videos from Solar Tunes.